Welcome back to the home lab and today what we're going to do is we're going to look at viscosity and a little experiment that's going to allow us to compare the viscosities of four different liquids. So I'm sure you all know a little bit about viscosity already. When you uh, eat honey and you stick the spoon into the honey and let the honey flow off the spoon, you'll notice it comes off really quite slowly. And that's affected by how warm the honey is as well. We describe it as being quite sort of a thick liquid, a thick fluid. It's very viscous. So today I want to explain what viscosity is, uh, what's the cause of viscosity and how we can compare the viscosity of different liquids. But first a little story. I was in Germany a while ago and we visited my partner's brother and he worked in the motor trade and we were sitting in the showroom waiting for him and I noticed on the desk there was this really interesting little um, executive toy. It was a block of perspex with some tubes drilled into it with different motor oils in them and when you tipped it upside down you could see the time it took for the oil to flow down the tubes. And it was an absolutely lovely demonstration of the viscosity of different motor oils. So what I thought I'd do is try and build one. Now, before you have a go at me about my dreadful engineering skills, uh, this build was very intentional. I wanted to build it with a hand electric drill on my desk with no clamps, uh, no jigs, etc. I just wanted to see if I could literally build something in an evening. And uh, it's not brilliant, but I think you'll find it shows the different viscosities of different liquids really nicely. So I got the block of perspex and started drilling uh, four holes in it and I drilled them again and again and again with uh, slightly wider diameter uh, drills until I was happy. And then I tapped out a thread in the top and got some plastic machine screws, uh, made them the right length, put a little rubber grommet on the end of those, checked they screwed in and I got myself a little viscosity toy, very similar to the one that was on my uh, partner's brother's desk in the motor showroom. So let's put some oil in it and see if it works. So the homemade Perspex viscometer's uh, here and it's got its four tubes in it. And what I thought we'd do is put distilled water as a control or comparison. I know that's not an oil, but as a comparison in the first tube. And then I've got three other oils that we can try. Um, I've got uh, one that was for my old Land Rover, some uh, 20W50 motor oil. Um, I've got some Castrol uh, Ultra Clean, this is more modern uh, multi-grade oil, uh, 10W40. And I've got some nice thick uh, hypoid gear oil, some EP90. So I'll put those in each of the tubes and I'll tell you which I'm putting uh, in each tube. And then we'll tip it upside down and see how the bubble moves and whether it can differentiate the different viscosities of these three oils compared to water. OK, so here we go for the first tube and that's going to be the deionized water. So we're just going to put water in that one as a means of a control. So for the next tube, let's put in some of the Castrol GTX 10W40 oil. Uh, that's a modern multi-grade motor oil. And uh, the 1040 is quite interesting. Uh, the 10W means it has uh, a certain viscosity in winter, that's cold temperatures, uh, that is thin, so the engine can turn over fairly easily when cold. And then when it warms up, it goes to a viscosity of 40, uh, which is thicker, so it coats the uh, engine parts uh, so they don't wear quite so much. So now for the Halfords Classic Motor Oil, the 20W50, and I think you know what the numbers mean now. 20 means it's got a low viscosity in the winter when it's cold, and once the engine warms up, it goes to a higher viscosity of 50. And I'm wondering if that oil is generally at room temperature more viscous than the one we've just put in, which was the Castrol GTX. Uh, 
Okay, so finally, let's put in the thick gear oil, the hypoid gear oil, that's an EP90. And once we've got those four in, we can then use our viscometer to compare their viscosities at room temperature. Okay, so here we go. We've got the oil in our little homemade viscometer now. And it was quite interesting. When I was pipetting the oil out of the big containers and into this, I noticed that it was actually quite difficult to pipette and to suck up the thicker oils, the more viscous oils, which is exactly, of course, what you'd expect. So I think this is going to work, but what we'll do now is tip it upside down and see how rapidly the air bubble moves through the different liquids. So here we go. I hope this isn't going to result in a terrible mess of oil all over my floor. Three, two, one, go. OK, so that was really interesting. I was quite surprised by that, actually. Uh, of course, we expected the water uh, to be the least viscous. So the bubble flows really quickly through that one. And then the 1040 oil uh, that went next. But there's almost no difference between the 2050 and the EP90 gear oil. Uh, remembering they're in the other order here, of course. So um, that worked really rather well, I thought. OK, so let's have a quick explanation of what viscosity is and what causes viscosity. So viscosity refers to the ability of a fluid to shear, to sort of pass over itself. And a really viscous fluid is one that doesn't shear very easily. And a low viscosity, the layers of the fluid can slide over each other very easily. What's happening is the particles are having to overcome forces between them, such as frictional forces and other intermolecular forces. You've also, with oils, got long chain hydrocarbons, and these sort of tangle up a bit like um, cooked spaghetti. And when you try to shear them, when you try to slide them, they don't like to move. So they produce a fluid with a very high viscosity. Now, you can imagine this is not just a matter for breakfast in the morning and uh, scooping out your honey and getting it off the spoon. But in engines, it's really important that the oil lubricating viscosity is correct because there are a lot of very fast moving parts and these will shear the oil. And we need to make sure that the oil can shear effectively uh, without the long chain hydrocarbons being snapped, but also stay on the metal layers. So we've still got a lubricating layer. A couple of interesting facts about viscosity that I thought would be nice to tell you. Uh, firstly, where does the word come from? And it's really strange. You'll never guess this one. Viscum is the berry on mistletoe, the stuff you kiss under at Christmas time. And they used to make a glue out of the berries from mistletoe. You might have squeezed one once and felt that it was a bit sticky and viscous. So that's where it gets its name from. There have also been some other really famous uh, viscosity experiments and the pitch ones are the famous ones. Uh, these are blocks of sort of thick tar and they've been put in a funnel. Uh, there are a number of universities that have these in display cabinets and um, you watch the tar slowly drip. And in some cases, I know there's uh, certainly one in the university where there's about one drop flowing off this into the beaker below per 10 years. So it's one of the most viscous fluids that we know. So we now know that viscosity is something about the resistance to motion um, at a given rate in a fluid. And you usually find that viscosity gets lower. In other words, the liquid gets thinner as the temperature goes up. But there's another interesting thing about viscosity. Most normal fluids, if you shear them slowly or a bit quicker, the uh, viscosity doesn't change. But you might have heard of non-Newtonian fluids. These are very strange indeed, where their viscosity and their behavior is completely different depending on the rate that you put the force on. So if you drag the layers very slowly or you move them very quickly. And I've made a video about non-Newtonian fluids, so you might want to have a look at that one. Anyway, I do hope you enjoyed that video and like seeing my little homemade viscometer. I'll be making another video soon 
and I look forward to having you join me then. Thank you.